Out of the fires of revolution, an American nation came into existence. And the names of the founding fathers like Washington, Jefferson, and Hamilton are known to all. A founder less known, but just as important, is John Marshall, the greatest judge in American history, and the man who made the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the third pillar of the federal government. Join host Richard Brookheiser on a journey across the country and back to the beginnings of our nation as he reveals the man who was Chief Justice of the United States for 34 years, setting legal precedents that define today's America, precedents drawn from the Constitution he loved and defended all his life. Federal courts can void acts of Congress in conflict with the Constitution. The President of the United States is not above the law. Legal contracts are sacrosanct. Interstate commerce is controlled by the federal government, not the states. Native American tribes have political sovereignty. Congress has powers not defined in the Constitution that are necessary and proper. There was one overriding theme to Marshall's chief justiceship, which was the ascent of the national government. He provided the foundation on which everything that has been built since then rests. Richard, I'm glad you could be here. We'll visit locations related to John Marshall's most important cases. And we'll meet the men and women living his legacy. John Marshall is born and raised in this county. That's right, he's born in 1755. This is actually a law school notebook that he kept while he was studying law to George With To violate conditions of a contract. Why does a country need a central bank? We'll discover the man behind the robe at Valley Forge with his mentor and hero, George Washington. His courtship and marriage. What came from this dance was the love of his life. Your Honor and will re-argue his most difficult trial. Persuasion. I mean, really, it's the only tool that a Chief Justice has. That some of the justices who have been the most effective have been the ones who were able to earn the trust uh, of their colleagues and made colleagues feel comfortable uh, talking with them. He's very charming. He's a beautiful writer. Will experience his triumphs. Marshall doesn't have to work his way through previous precedents, as modern courts do. He gets to make the president. And we'll understand his disappointments. It got him away from an election his party was losing and from a war he didn't want America to fight. We'll meet his lifelong enemy, his cousin, Thomas Jefferson. He called it a dish cooked up by Marshall. Yeah, he could get really, really angry and Marshall managed to make him very angry. Their political and personal rivalry will come to shape America's future. And Marbury is actually a great example of that, right? It's a brilliant tactical move on the part of Marshall. He has the Jeffersonians in an impossible position. He was determined to do all he could to make the United States succeed. Historians debate about whether great forces change history or whether great men do. On this issue, a great man did, and that was John Marshall. A man of his time, and for all times in the America he helped create. John Marshall, the man who made the Supreme Court.